Okay, welcome back. Uh, today is what I'm calling lesson three. These lessons aren't arranged in any particular order. I just kind of made a list and I'm going through them one at a time. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about today is your foundations have to be in place before you can use advanced protocols. So, what that means is if you are starting this whole thing and you see some workout that looks really cool, you need to be able to discern if it's appropriate for you. Okay, if you're a beginner, there's a lot of stuff out there that's really cool, that's fun to do, that's very satisfying, but you might need to lay down a foundation before you can really dig into those things. If you are a trainer or a coach, this can be a little bit tricky because I think a lot of trainers get bored, especially because by volume, most of the people you work with are probably beginners, whether you're a coach or you're um, a personal trainer or whatever. So it's really important that you give people things that they need that are appropriate for them, for their level where they're at. Don't try and get them to do advanced things. A very simple example that I can pick on is um, cleans or any of the Olympic lifts. Um, a lot of people will just kind of I don't know how many athletes I've talked to who freshman year in high school, they just started doing cleans off the floor the first day. They'd never done squats, they'd never done deadlifts, they had no foundation. I'm going to be blunt, this is stupid. It's really stupid. And the problem is, and you know, obviously it can be done, you know, and a lot of athletes have done stuff like that and they still go on to have productive careers. But there's no need for it, you're just limiting somebody's foundation. So, and the reality is, you know, most people do cleans or similar things, snatches, whatever, because they want to develop that, uh, that speed, that, that speed strength or strength speed. But if the athlete still has the potential for strength to improve, um, that will do more to make them faster than trying to make them move faster artificially by doing something really complex. So, so I'm not being critical of the Olympic lifts. I like the Olympic lifts. I got my USA cert at the Olympic uh, Training Center in Colorado Springs, so, um, but I have very rarely seen, and by that I mean I've actually never seen an athlete in person who had what I would call good form on a clean. Um, there's a lot of stuff I could say about that. Boston Stomp is a good example, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to kind of rein this in a little bit. Uh, basically, if you're teaching athletes and you um, like the Olympic lifts, that's fantastic. Teach them how to deadlift before you teach them how to clean. And just understand that the if they're still getting stronger, that's going to do more to make them faster than teaching them to accelerate the bar with a clean. Uh, the other thing is, anytime I've taught someone to clean, I always take them through one or two cycles first where I teach them how to front squat so they can get comfortable with that position. Um, you will get much better results if you build a foundation before you try advanced things. And there's a lot of things I could pick on here, but this is just an easy one. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Anything else I want to kind of get on? Oh yeah, Boston Stop. Okay, I'll come back to that in a second. So. Okay. So. Real briefly, I'm just going to talk about what's called the Boston Stomp. And that is, you will see some people when they execute a clean, their foot comes way off the platform and it stomps down real hard. Um, this comes from, if you, if, you, if you ever watch a really good Olympic weightlifter lift weights, you know, they're wearing shoes that have wooden soles. Okay. I'm talking about like, just weightlifting, they're not doing like another sport where they're using a sort of a weightlifting shoe that's designed for like cross purposes. We're talking about just a weightlifter. This is how this began. Um, so like a someone who's competing strictly in Olympic weightlifting, the soles have uh, the shoes have wooden soles and they're on wooden platforms, right? And so it obviously it, it makes a lot of sound when they when they uh, when they land. But if you watch them their feet barely come off the ground, if they come off the ground at all. Now, they'll get a triple extension so the heel will come off the ground. Now, if you don't know what a triple extension is, you do not need to be messing with Olympic lifts, 
Okay, you definitely don't need to be coaching people at Olympic lifts. So, stop my video, <clears throat> go look up triple extension, and then figure that out before you proceed. Um, watch a good, watch some good lifters, like actual Olympic lifters, who had, like Peristemus is a good example. If you watch them, uh, their foot, it, it doesn't really come off the platform that much. But there's a lot of sound because that wooden sole hits that platform and makes a lot of noise. So somehow that turned into athletes kind of like jumping off the platform. And the body doesn't jump, but that foot will come up real high and slam down. Uh, it's really hard to teach people that have learned that a proper triple extension. And if you're a coach who's dealing with that, uh, my advice is go back to the... Um, the assistance lifts, okay, so you can do like high pulls and various things, I've done that a lot, uh, to try and learn that triple extension properly, so you have to kind of dial it back a bit, and you can get a lot of the benefits from the assistance lifts that you would get out of the traditional, the clean and the snatch, so, um, and realistically, before someone really learns how to clean, they should go through some process with the, with the assistance lifts, they shouldn't just start with the clean, um, you will have some people who can, you know, they might start with a clean and it might seem fine, blah, blah, blah. But if you don't have that foundation, really you just, all you're doing is you're, you're, you're making their base smaller. Um, so obviously, like, the, the broader the base is, the better the structure. Um, I probably didn't say that correctly. That's a real general statement, but uh, maybe you understand what I'm trying to get at. So anyway... When you have beginners, so whether if you're a beginner yourself, just you will respond really well to basic things for quite a while, like a year or two at least. Um, doesn't mean you can't explore the Olympic lifts, it just means you need to take a month or two at least, you know, get good at a deadlift and get comfortable with a front squat before you try doing cleans. Um, and there's a lot of other things I could kind of pick on with that. But so, anyway, the basic of the lesson is. Um, Beginners respond really well to simple things, and make sure you're not shortchanging yourself or your athletes by trying to do things they're not ready for. So uh, that's all for today. Have a productive week. Thanks.